happy video day guys so today's video we're gonna be going through a few things that I think I should have done on my wedding day I did my own makeup on my wedding day and now looking back five six years later looking back at my wedding photos there's a few things that I'm like damn I should have done that different not a few things there's a lot of things that I wish I would have done different knowing what I know now so if you guys want to learn some tips and tricks of stuff that I think that I should have known for my wedding makeup, then I think that you guys might like this video. If you guys are new here, my name is Christina Brooke and this is The Glam Ranch. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you guys can be part of The Glam Ranch family. And let's go ahead and get right into the video. take all this makeup off and you're gonna see how I went through all this but like I said before I did my own makeup and it was a destination wedding so for me it was kind of more about like things that I should have known when doing your own makeup so this is gonna be focused on that so anybody who's getting married now in the winter time congratulations I actually got married in October I loved it it was during the season that the leaves were changing so let's go ahead and let's get right into putting all this stuff on my face and I'm gonna show you guys what I would have changed so let's get started so I'm going to share with you guys a few stories too about my wedding day so that you guys can also kind of feel where I'm coming from. So let's just throw my hair back here. So for my wedding, I did a destination wedding. So I didn't get married in my hometown. So we actually got married in North Carolina and it was actually in Asheville and we got married at the Biltmore, which is there in Asheville, North Carolina. And it was just something that I always wanted to do. I just thought the Biltmore was so cool and that was like the location that I thought would be awesome. So we definitely wanted to do a destination wedding. We didn't want to have like a ginormous party. We kind of like wanted to have a smaller intimate party with like close family and friends. So that's why we had picked there. But also coming with a destination wedding, you start to not realize that there's a lot of stuff that goes into a destination wedding, even though it is like supposed to be smaller and everything, but there's a lot of planning. And yeah, I'm happy I did have a really good party planner. She was amazing. She's based out of North Carolina, um, Mary Bell. Her name was Mary Bell Events. And oh my God, she was phenomenal. I really like, honestly, if it wasn't for her, I would think I would have gone crazy. So she kind of handled a lot of the actual like wedding planning type of stuff for me, which was, ugh, thank God. But things went a little crazy for me is I decided that I wanted to do my own makeup. And that is usually okay because I usually don't, like stress and stuff doesn't like really bother me when it comes to doing makeup and stuff but now looking back at some of the photos I'm like damn why didn't I think of using that why didn't I I don't know if I would have known like some of the stuff that I know now I would have changed a few things of what I would have done with my makeup so that's what we're gonna go over right now first thing that I would have done for sure if I would have used a good primer on my wedding day to be to be honest I don't even think I used a primer I don't think I did. Probably my Dr. Brandt pores no more and it kind of just like put that in my pore area kind of to cover up my pores and also a little bit on my face. Primers tend to help your makeup sit a little bit better on your face and like days like weddings and stuff like that, you really want to make sure that you do have your face like very conditioned. Problem areas that you want covered, you want them as covered as possible on the wedding day because of all the photos you're going to be taking. Okay, so then another thing that I would have definitely done and this was something that I didn't do right because I used a foundation, the La Paris Skin Caviar, which was the foundation that I always use and I love that foundation. The only problem is that foundation after wearing it for a few hours, it does get a little oily and I should have set it with a powder, but I didn't even think about it because I don't know, I guess I wasn't thinking like full days since I don't like specialize in doing like wedding makeup, you know, I didn't think about like full day of wear and how it has to like last. So by the end of the day, I do know that my makeup was starting to look a little oily and I didn't even think about packing like powder in my bag. Like I didn't think of none of this. I don't know if it was just the wedding like kind of like consumed me and I kind of like forgot a lot of stuff, which I probably wouldn't have forgot in any other occasion or what, but I totally forgot all of these things. Like it was really bad. So what I would have done and this is what I would have done differently. I would have used my YSL all hours foundation because this foundation sits awesome on my skin. It's a good tone for me because it is a little bit darker than my skin tone and I feel in photographs 
if the hue is a little bit darker not like so noticeable that it's like it depends on the color of your skin too if you have a very fair skin tone i think if you go darker it could look off but if you have like me that's more like a light medium and i have a little bit of a yellow undertone if i go a little bit darker on the warm yellowy tones it looks really good in photographs if you know what i'm saying um yeah if you have like a pink undertone i feel like if you go a little darker it's very pink and it looks weird and that doesn't work that much foundations and color matching is like an art to be honest guys so you just gotta like really perfect your personal like color and see which one works best for you but i've learned that with my skin tone that i have like a light medium with a yellow undertone if i go a little bit darker bring it down my neck a little bit because my body is just naturally a little bit tanner because probably because of where i live it's super sunny all the time it looks a little bit more natural on me and i don't get like white face dark dark body, which that looks always so strange to me. I would have used a brush at first because I do know that the brush application, it just goes on a lot evener and more full coverage. Another thing I think I didn't think of is I should have been like not so concerned with wearing too much makeup. Cause sometimes like I think, oh, I don't wanna wear too much makeup cause it's daytime. And when it's your wedding day, you have to forget about that. And you have to think like it's the whole daytime. You know what I mean? Like you're gonna be in this all day so forget about the fact that it's all like oh i don't want to wear too much makeup because it's the middle of the day who cares like i don't know i i guess i don't think i thought of that too much i think i was thinking like oh well how would i typically do my makeup for an event and i wasn't really thinking like the event that will go through the entire day and it's funny because i've done my sister's makeup for her wedding and I thought that way. Like I thought like make her makeup like really nice so it comes out awesome in photos. Who cares if she looks like she's wearing too much makeup? But I guess when it's you and you're doing your own makeup, you think different. You think, well, I don't wanna have too much makeup on because then I'm gonna look ridiculous, you know? But when you do other people's makeup, I don't know, you think about those things more, at least I did, which was pretty crazy to me. <laughs> and then I would just definitely go over like these areas that I have like imperfections that I want covered with a beauty blender, kind of just to keep it natural and also to kind of like make sure everything looks flawless. Sometimes the beauty blender gives a little bit of a more flawless application, but it also is a more sheer application. So I feel like after I do the brush, if I go over with a beauty blender, it kind of just like smooths everything out. Another thing that I would point out to you guys that if you guys are planning on getting married, like and doing your own makeup just remember that there this is something i didn't even think of and honestly guys it was pretty crazy that i didn't think of this but i didn't um the photographer is gonna want to take photos of you and stuff while you're getting ready and if you're somebody who gets nervous with like cameras in your face and you're already trying to do your own makeup that could be super nerve-wracking. You have like a person, which in my case, it was a man, that he came into the room and he started filming me while I was getting ready. And I already was like, oh, hi, you know? Like, oh, you're gonna, you're gonna film? Okay, obviously I want that footage because that's like the cool thing, you know, like when you're getting ready and you see the footage come back and you're like, oh, look, that's me getting ready. But when you're doing your own makeup, <laughs> because now you're getting ready and now you have somebody with a camera in your face and you're doing your own makeup so you're already nervous because you have everything going on around you like you know like the bridesmaid and where's this person and this person needs to get their hair done but they're not here yet and why is this and you're like ah and you're dealing with some of these things and then because even though you have wedding planners you hear everything you're still dealing with it you're still trying to figure out what's going on you know you're not just sitting there like and this i would definitely have used a lid primer this is my smashbox lid primer I would have done this. I didn't use a lid primer either uh, because I don't know. I think I forgot this step. Um, and um, so the guy was filming me and I was getting so nervous and I completely forgot to put on mascara. Yes. On my wedding day, which you guys know one of my favorite things to do is put on mascara because I don't wear fake lashes and I wouldn't have worn fake lashes on my wedding day either just because since I don't typically wear them on my wedding day, I want to look like myself, you know, I want to look like myself dressed up, but I don't want to look like somebody I'm not. And I'm not somebody who wears fake lashes, so I, I would have felt weird with them on, but I forgot to put on mascara. So I would say a tip that I would give you guys is any event that you're doing, if you're doing your own makeup, 
make a list of all the stuff you want to put on your face. And I know this sounds so stupid and some people are going to be like, I'm just going to set my eyes with some powder. Some people will be like, oh my God, but that's so ridiculous. Why would you do that? Definitely do it because when you're under pressure, you don't realize stuff that you're going to skip over. And if you skip over something important like mascara, trust me, it will haunt you. It haunts me. I think about it all the time that I didn't have mascara on on my wedding day. If you're doing a client's makeup, I don't know why. Sometimes I feel like it's easier and you don't forget things. So another thing that I would have definitely done is I would have used this palette right here. I don't even remember the palette that I used. That is not a good sign. I can't remember what eyeshadow palette I used. It is such a like reliable palette. The coloration is really, really, really good. It has every single color you can think of, but this is such a good like palette for like weddings because it just has everything you can think of. I'm gonna show you guys my quick little eye look that I definitely would have kind of focused a little bit harder on my eyes and really done something that I really would have been more proud of. I like the eye look I came out with on my wedding day and I think it was a nice one. It's just, I think I had so much stress with like the camera guy zooming in on me while I was doing my eyes that I kind of like was trying to hurry through the process instead of like really taking my time and not caring that there was anybody around you know so let's go ahead and I'm going to show you guys quickly what I would have done and this is kind of like a go-to for me I just would have made it a little bit more strong so using the color silk cream I definitely would have used I would have used this all over the lid and kind of focused it upwards towards the eyebrow just to kind of give the eyes a little dimension and also this is like a perfect transitional color. It helps to start off your makeup with a good transitional color. So then to go ahead and start darkening things up, I would have jumped into the color Hooter, which is a nice brownish color. And I would stay to like the brown neutral tones just because you wanna be careful with using colors that are a little bit in at the moment that you're getting married because things are not gonna stay in forever. So try to keep colors that you know look good on you. So then now to add a little bit more dimension, I'm just gonna grab into one of the darker, darker, darker hues in here. I'm gonna grab into Central Park and that's gonna be the color I'm gonna really focus in the outer corners and that I'm gonna use a small, small detail brush and I'm just gonna really put that in. So you see how that darkened up the outer corners a lot? Then with a clean brush, I'm gonna go ahead with my Sigma E40 and blend it all out. I'm gonna grab buns. I would have grabbed some Fix Plus. I would have wet my brush to really make my shimmery colors really stand out. So that's what we have going and I'm really loving the way that this is looking. So then from this point, I would start with my concealer because now I've been leaving my concealer to after I do my eyes because I feel like you can kind of cut the edges and everything if you do it this way. I'm gonna go ahead and use, I should have used, and I don't think I used it back then, was Tarte Shape Tape. Actually, I don't even know if Tarte Shape Tape was out back then when I got married, probably not. So I'm just gonna go like this and add a few stripes here. I'm not gonna do too much. Don't over cake yourself with shape tape because I know a lot of people do that and I think I added too much anyways, but it could actually make you look wrinkly <laughs> if you have under eye wrinkles. So what I probably would have used was my Cover FX setting powder and I would have set my under eyes with this, which I set it with something else. And also I would have set my face and that's something that I didn't do because I tend to have normal um, not really that oily of skin, but because it's like a whole day event, I should have just gone like this and just set my whole face. Even though I know that setting your face could be like a little bit even more cakier, but when you're gonna be like out the whole day and this is a whole day event, even if, if you have normal skin, I feel like your normal skin <laughs> get very oily and my skin at the end of the party was oily and I remember that and I think it's because I didn't set my face and I probably would have added extra under my eyes to really have it bake under there because that is an area that really could crease on me and also I want it to look very smooth and perfect. 
So I would have stayed like this for a good amount of minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and work on eyeliner. I definitely would have done liner, which I, did I do, I did do liner, but I think I would have done ink liner and I think I did pen, pencil liner. So I would have used my pretty vulgar liner at this point, even though I love my ink lot still. But I feel like the pretty vulgar, um, I don't know, you can, it works a little bit easier. And if you're under pressure, especially now that I know that you do have a little bit of pressure, I would have definitely used something more reliable. So I would have done something like that, a little bit more noticeable of a wing for photographs. Because in photographs, this is gonna be a lot more appealing than if you do the small little wing, especially for the type of photos that you're gonna take. I like the way a wing looks. Now, if you guys are new to wing liner, don't try this for the first time on your wedding day. And also try not to look up for a few minutes so that it dries. I tend to always do that because I'm in a hurry. So try not to look up. I wish that this palette would have existed, the Cali Contour from Smashbox. I really wish that this would have existed during my wedding day because I love everything about this palette. I would have definitely bronzed. I used the Hula bronzer on my wedding day. It was still pretty good, but nothing compared to how beautiful this palette bronzes your skin. See, I still have the bake on because <laughs> I'm still like kind of sealing that in place. Bronzes you want to look because you're going to be in photos so you don't want to look too white but you want to make sure your neck matches so go down your neck. I would wipe away this bake which actually works out because then it keeps my under eyes very light. You see how that keeps my under eyes nice and bright even though I just put on bronzer on. The thing I would have done is contour. I didn't contour on my wedding day. Yeah because I was less is more <laughs> back then and I would have contoured now because I like the way contour looks, especially in photographs. And I would have just done my cheeks like this, just to give it dimension and a little bit to my forehead. I have a small forehead, so I like to give the illusion like it's a little bit bigger. So that's all the contouring I would have done, but I really wish I would have done that. I think it would have helped a lot with like everything. So for blush, what I would have, I would have just used, um, I could have used any of these. I could have used my Jouer blush, which I really love this color here. But I think in this case, I probably would have loved this Smashbox Cali Contour blush. So I would have just added that to the apples in my cheeks like so. Just very simple and just, and that's it. So then for highlight, which I didn't wear highlight on my wedding day. I would have used this Pixie highlighter. I think back then, I don't think like highlight was like really in or anything like that. Like, I don't even think that people used it that often. So I would have mixed these two colors together. I love this Pixie highlighter. It's my favorite. So I would have just added it like so, just so it's a little bit noticeable on the cheeks. I bring it halfway up. I don't bring it like just here. I bring it all the way to here. And I would have brought it up here because I like to bring it here a little bit here, not too much. And that's it. So I glow because I love that glowy look. I just think it's so pretty. So now let's work on the lower lash line. What I would have done for the lower lash line is try to keep it a little bit simple. I wouldn't have gone too crazy. Is I would have just jumped into the color silk cream, brought that underneath my lower lash line. Then I would have jumped into a darker tone, probably the buns color. So, and then with a tight line brush, I would have tight lines with the darkest tone that I put on my face today. And that Central Park. And just brought that along. Half of the waterline, I would have brought it halfway just to kind of make my eyes look a little bigger. And then blended everything together with whatever was left on this brush. That is the eyes. And this was, I wish I would have had like this eye look. I think this eye look would have been perfect. It's similar to what I did. It's just not as pronounced. I think I, I kind of like skipped over some of the steps. Oh, and I would have added a center highlight. Duh. I would have jumped into beam and I would have used that to just highlight the inner corner. That would have been great if I would have done that. Yeah. Anastasia would have come with me. And I would have done my eyebrows because back then I just didn't think that doing your eyebrows was needed. And now I feel like, why did I not think that you could not do your eyebrows? Especially when you have like sparse hair, like I have areas that need to be filled in a little bit that it just looks so much better in photos. And I don't know why I didn't think of it. So I would have just done like that and it kind of just fills in the brows, makes them look a little bit more perfect and less like sparse. 
And that would have been perfect. Why didn't I do this? I don't know. Comb through the brows and then add a little bit of brow gel so your brows don't go anywhere. My brows are not like the type that move around that often, but because I put product, you don't want the product all over your face, so this would have been ideal to do. Now that my face is completely done, I don't think I did it. I don't need anything else, right? Oh my God, I almost forgot mascara again. You guys, it's the wedding day curse. And I don't know where my L'Oreal Lash Paradise is because like I said, it's the wedding day curse. So I would definitely use something like this to curl my lashes, which I tend to forget to do sometimes, but it does help a lot and just curl my lashes. Take your time. All right, so I would definitely do my mascara. So I'm gonna use my It Cosmetics um, mascara that I really like a lot. It really separates the lashes, which makes them look more natural. And then I will go over them with L'Oreal Lash Paradise. And the final thing what I would have done was my lips and I definitely would have used this Makeup Forever lips liner. I love this stuff. So this is such a good lip liner. And then for lips, I probably would have used this, this Kylie Cosmetics Candy K. It's a beautiful color. It would be between this and one of the Huda Beauty lipsticks, but I feel like this one is like the perfect like nudie pink. And I could use the liner that comes with this too. It's a similar one to the Makeup Forever one, but honestly guys, I don't have a sharpener. Can you believe I don't have a sharpener? I know. And then the lipstick is on. And the final thing that I would have done that I didn't do on my wedding day is I would have used the Tasha Luminous Dewy Skin Mist to set everything because I never, I always forget to do this and On your wedding day, this is so important because you want everything to like stick and stay and melt. So, and this is the final look. This is what I wish my makeup would have looked like on my wedding day and the stuff that I completely forgot to do. Yeah, there was just a few things that I really wish that I would have known, especially about doing your own makeup on your wedding day. So I'm gonna tell you guys the main things that I would have definitely hoped I remember. The first thing was writing down a list of the products that I was gonna use on my face and make sure that I use them all. Second thing I would tell you guys is even though you're gonna do your own makeup, do a trial run. Pretend like you are the trial one person and do your makeup like a few days in advance and do different looks and pick the one you want and take photos of the look that you did so that you kind of remember what you did. Another thing that I would definitely say is set your face with a setting powder. Definitely, even if, if you have like normal to oily skin setting powder, set your face with a setting powder because it is so crucial because if you're gonna be out in the sun and you're gonna be out all day, you're gonna get oily and you want your face to be set. Beneath your makeup, use a primer. Primer does help to keep your makeup on longer. I think if any time to use a primer, it would definitely be your wedding day. Another thing that I would have re recommended too is using a liquid lipstick instead of a lipstick. I used a lipstick on my wedding day and it didn't last. Like by the time I did like my first C's or whatever that you go and you take your pictures and then the wedding was about to start and everything, I hardly had any lipstick left. Then you're, you have to make sure you have a bag with you and then if you're in the car, it can get really complicated to like touch up and put more makeup on unless you have like a makeup artist there with you following behind you. But if you're doing like a destination wedding like myself and you're doing something that you're gonna do your own makeup, it's hard to know that you need to have this bag with you and you have to touch up your makeup and then it's 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 complicated. Set, definitely spray your face with some type of setting spray at the end to have everything lock in place. It's kind of like putting hairspray on. Use your face hairspray. Put some type of lid um, eyeshadow primer on because you want your eyeshadow to stay really long and you also want it to look vibrant. Um, don't go for anything like too in or too modern unless that's your thing. Just because in the future, those things could be out of style and the same with your makeup. If you put something on that's like super in and maybe you don't love the way it looks on you, but you just think it's modern. It might not be in in four years, five years down the road and you're gonna be like, eee, I wish I wouldn't have worn hot fuchsia lipstick. You know what I'm saying? I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Those are the things I would have changed and this is how I would have had my makeup and I think it would have been perfect. It is a very natural toned down look, but at the same time, it would have photographed really, really good and I don't think I would have had stress over <sighs> thinking that at the end of the night, look, I had no makeup on at all. I think this would have lasted a little longer. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below what else you guys wanna see and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.